Okay, good day. This is Pre-Calculus Blended Learning Day, March 3rd, 2023. I hope you're having a good Friday. Today we're going to solve some exponential equations involving logarithms, and then we're going to solve some compound interest equations. So the one big review thing that we're going to use a lot today is the fact that if you take the logarithm of an exponential that's by itself, you can take that exponent and you can bring it down in front so that it becomes a multiplication. And that's very advantageous when we're trying to solve for values that are up there in the exponent. So a real simple place to start is this expression right here. So I have five to the n minus five minus eight is equal to six. Now, logarithms are on the same level as exponents. And so if I want to take the logarithm of both sides, I have to get this exponential by itself first. So I'm going to add eight to both sides. So I'll have five n minus five, and then six plus eight is going to give me 14. Now that I have nothing in front of the exponential and um, it's by itself, I can take the logarithm of both sides. Now you can take any logarithm and just because I'm want to write as least amount as possible, I'm going to use ln. So I'm going to go the ln of 5 to the n minus 5 is equal to the ln of 14. Then I'm going to take that and I'm going to bring this whole expression down there in front. And so in the next step, I'll write this as n minus 5 ln of 5 equal to the ln of 14. Now I could distribute this ln 5 if I want, but to make it easier on myself, I'm going to divide both sides by the ln of 5 and I'll have n minus 5 equals the ln of 14 over the ln of 5. And then getting n by itself is just a simple matter of adding 5 to both sides. So I'll have the ln of 14 divided by the ln of 5 plus 5. And the good news is I can go right to Desmos and I can bring Desmos down in here. Open this up and put it so you guys can see it. I can just type that in. And so I'll go parentheses ln of 14. And then I will divide that by the ln of 5. And then after the parentheses, I will add 5 to it. And it gives me 6 point, let's see here, 6397. So if I go three decimal places, I'll have to round up. So 6.640. We'll push that down here. Actually, we'll just kind of go like that. And it was 6.640. All right. The second thing that we're going to talk about is the continuous growth formula. A equals PE to the RT. And if you remember, this is your final amount. This is your initial amount. R is the rate as a decimal. And T is the time. And usually that is in years. So when I look at a, uh, an example like this, Jose invests $8,259 in a retirement account with a fixed annual interest rate compounded continuously. After 15 years, the balance reaches $20,313.86. What is the interest rate of the account? So I'm going to just make a list. A equals PE to the RT. I'm going to make a list of all of those things that I know. So off the bat, I know that he invests. That is my initial amount. So 8259. And then at the end, or after 15 years, so my time is 15, uh, the balance ends up being 20,000, 13, 3.86. It says, what is the interest rate of the count? Well, hey, check it out. That's the only one that I don't know. So what I'll do is I'll start with my A equals PE to the RT, and I will plug in what I know. So I've got this 20,313.86 is equal to 
256 or 59 excuse me 8259 and then it's e to the r times 15 okay so i want to solve for this r right here so i'm going to do something something similar to what we did in the last one where i want to take the ln of both sides but before i can do that i'm going to have to divide i need to get this coefficient here to be one so I'm going to divide by 8,259. And that will give me E to the 15R is equal to, and I'm only going to do it, go to decimals once. So for right now, I'm going to rewrite that 2313. And I got to be careful to co keep copying it correctly. 86 over... Um, 8259 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ln of both of those sides and this one's a little bit different than the other one because I had the ln of one over the ln of the other this one I'm going to divide first and so again that property of exponents allows me to bring that down in front so I have 15 r ln of e equals to the ln of 20 1313.86 all over 8259. And if you recall, the reason we use ln when you have an e is because the ln of e is equal to 1. So this kind of cancels out. And so I end up with r equals the ln of 2313.86 over 8259. And then that will be all over 15. And so I'm going to just plug that into Desmos as is. And so I'll come up here. Oops, I didn't want that. Let's bring this back down here. Oh, look, it's all going crazy. Let's get that Desmos. I don't want that. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Actually, I'm gonna move this other screen up so I can see it. And then I'll type it in. All right, let's see here. I have to do the LN of parentheses, 2313.86, and then divide that by 8259. We'll close that parenthesis, and then we'll divide that by 15. All right, so right here, I end up with 0 0.5999. So if I'm rounding the three, um, three significant digits, that nine there will round that up to a 10, round that up to a 10, round that up to a six. And so when I bring this back down, maybe, there we go. this up. I think we can safely say that this is going to be 0.06 or a 6% rate of return. And if you can get a 6% rate of return uh, in this day and age, you should take it. All right there, folks. That is all I got. I hope you have a good um, Friday. If you need any help, I will have a office hour and that will be listed and a link will be in the stream. Have a good weekend. Goodbye.